All right, all right, all right, all right. Well, here we are one day before the Lord's Test Match, the second Test Match, perhaps indeed the most special Test Matches of our entire lives. So Pez and I thought that we would come to the Oval to watch Surrey against Lancashire or some shit. Uh, we actually are recording this, uh, this podcast. Episode 241 right here from the Oval. Uh, at beautiful Oval, which is, uh, I just refer to grounds uh, with tube stations now. Mm. Uh, this episode is brought to you by Budgie Smuggler, budgiesmuggler.com.au for all your swimwear needs. Summer is here, <laughs> especially in the UK. If you're in Australia, summer's not here. Don't listen to that. It means party shirts. It means no hat, no play kind of weather. I'm talking skies out, thighs out stuff. Uh, everything here uh-huh. that we're doing, everything that we're doing, it's all for Budgie Smuggler, budgiesmuggler.com.au. If you're in Australia, .com, if you're anywhere else, you can use the code Good Areas for free shipping. That code is valid in both the UK and Australia, and indeed other territories and states and associate nations across the world. <laughs> big show today, Pez. It's a big, it, we actually are at the Oval, by the way. I mean, people watching on YouTube will, will understand that. We're at the Oval so much. I know you're doing your intro monologue, but we're at the Oval so much that um, I'm quite taken aback by the aggression of your voice. I'm pretty sure Surrey and Lancashire can now listen to the Grade Cricketer podcast live <laughs> on field. Fr- there's, there's a couple of friends of the show out in the field. Uh, Phil Salt's batting. Uh, Daryl Mitchell just got out. Yeah. Sabah, Sabah took four from the first innings, 87 red in the second. Mm-hmm. Um, Dan Worrell trying to get Dan, – Dan's bowling at the moment. I've mm. uh, spoken to him before on Channel 7, and I'm pretty sure they're now going to play a county game while listening to us do a show. Because <laughs> there's not that many people here, <laughs> and I've got a couple of big booming things I want to say from me voice box. Yeah. Uh, it's been a wonderful week, especially for our women. Ash Gardner, my goodness me, sensational. Our women. Not nearly as good as Tammy Beaumont's match, who's got a 200 and a losing side. Uh, uh, Shot. <laughs> <Just, laughs> we're, we're looking at the grounds. Was, was that our close personal friend, Phil <laughs> Salt, hitting that shot? How <laughs> um, oh, there's Rory Burns, Lewis and Fielding. Anyway, um, uh, you know, a lot to discuss. Obviously, the West Indies have had a couple of tough losses to Zimbabwe than the Netherlands in this remarkable super over. Uh, we'll be talking about the matchups for, for the Lords Test match starting tomorrow. Mm. Um, Key matchups. England, England's already uh, announced their side. We've had a look at the state of the pitch just on the, on the internet. And also. Barney Ronay is on the show. People have asked, and we have delivered for mm. Barney Ronay after his uh, thought-provoking piece last week uh, describing Baz mm. as a cult. Wow, I've never seen it, but... <laughs> it's, it, was, it was thought-provoking. Describe your piece. It was thought-provoking. Thought <laughs> uh, I suppose off the top here, this will be the last uh, podcast that Pez and I uh, are in together for in... Um, oh, drop catch. Red cover. Pez and I are together for in the UK uh, as we get distracted by what's happening in front of us. Um, uh, Pez, you're heading back uh, You're heading back to Melbourne on Friday, uh, day three of the test. I'm, I'm going to stick yeah. around for the end of the Lord's Test match before heading back. But um, just a couple of thoughts. Uh, being in the UK, it's, it's been a whirlwind trip. We've obviously been to Birmingham, then into uh, Manchester and the Leeds, then back down to London, where we've done two of our uh, three shows so far in London. Uh, and it's been an amazing experience. Obviously, we're so lucky and privileged to be in the UK and more specifically Edge Baston and Birmingham for that test match and uh yeah, it's been it's been really special. It's been really special to be back here after after four years. Yeah, no, um, uh, you you said it beautifully. It's been great to catch up with friends. Uh, great to be here in the flesh, particularly for Australia's uh, historic win. Uh, and yeah, one more show tonight at Union Chapel. I mean, some of the some of the venues we've um, played at. Uh, really Unreal. blown our minds. Unreal, um, yeah. There's just zero chance that we're in any way befitting of them. Mm. Uh, in particular, being at Union Chapel last night, which um, is a functioning chapel, a functioning chapel where you can literally see the the Jesus cross mm. in stained glass windows, um, covering all sorts of territory like mm. nonces, um, cock sizes, uh, and whether or not. Jesus was hung on the cross or was signalling wide. <laughs> uh, you know, that's the kind of gear <laughs> we're throwing up there. Indeed. Uh, but, um, yeah, it's... it's. I, I mean, it hasn't even really sunk in. It's been extremely cool and we can only be... Um, just super grateful for the support from everybody having mm-hmm. not been here for four years we're very very uh, touched and moved by it and i don't really want to say too much more for uh, masculinity reasons I'll tell you what we've seen some thought-provoking pieces uh, throughout this time yeah it's, it's amazing how many people um just a shout out uh, if you're listening to this uh right now you can sign up to patreon to get the uh end of days play through your ears at patreon.com forward slash great cricketer there'll be reviews for every single day's play uh in these in these here fair ashes um and uh, we'll be, of course, at Lords uh, for all, for all the days of this test match. So if you want to sign up to Patreon and get behind 
us and uh, and support TGC, you can go patreon.com forward slash great cricketers. Pez is now waving to Phil Salt, who's actually batting in the middle. He's, he's, he's taking breaks <laughs> in between balls. He's trying to whack every single ball. It's, I think the, the deck's slow. And he's, he, I think he, during his breaks, he's just having to look up at us. Uh, we said hello earlier. And uh, and just one more thing with Patreon. I think people people appreciated the, the Bluey breakdown, the episode of the Bluey oh, yeah, breakdown yeah, yeah, from, yeah. Uh, from, yeah. from last yeah. week's episode. So that was on hashtag RCC Fridays. Uh, Played. So that, so that was all good. All right. The second test match, Pez, uh, England v Australia. I think the test match is going to be at the uh, at the home of cricket. You think? Yeah, I think. Um, I think. I think it is. Uh, and it's just been. Uh, it feels like, honestly, or for me personally, just my experience with living my life, mm. is that it feels like it's been about four and a half months since the end of that first test match. Yeah. And fuck me, there's been some blokes who just want to say some stuff to one another. Yeah. Um, you know, in the media, uh, and I suppose that's the nature of the media. You're paid mm. to make comments. And then those comments get picked up and they get circulated. Then you yep. see them on the internet and they get fed into your brain. Then you think, well, what's that? What's that like? Um, and uh, uh, and yeah, I suppose that's that's sort of been like what's happened the most in my experience of the Ashes so far. Just people talking about Ollie Robinson. Um, you know, baseball does it work? You know, and and I I, I was excited for the cr- for the Test matches to start because I thought the war of words would stop, but it seems to be getting just more and more. Mm. Um, pronounced, yeah, pronounced, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah well, I mean, uh, th- th- there's there's two sort of test matches going on. There's the on-field <laughs> test match, and then there's the internet test yeah. match, and, and, the, uh, and the O5 series. Yeah, that's right. All the old boys are getting back together. And it's very difficult to win the internet test match if your side's lost that, on field. So I, I do think Australia. Like I, I'm trying to be objective about it. it. I've got no. I mean, I do have a dog in the fight, really. Mm. I'm not even sure if winning an internet test match just makes you a nonce as well. So if you even want to win it, uh, I am I'm concerned about how much toxicity is around for oh. the next five test matches. Oh We're talking about clashes of ideologies. Then you've got some like just general low level, um, relentlessly bubbling intercolonial disdain that just sits there. <laughs> you know, that's one of the trophy. <laughs> <laughs> General low-level bubbling intercolonial disdain. Yeah, that's just a picture uh, of a guy having a wank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm pointing out someone whose name is Dane. Disdain. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> which Dane? Disdain. <laughs> Dane Vias is playing today. Uh, <laughs> shot salty. Go on, boy. Shot salty. <laughs> so we get a look. Uh, anyway. Uh, so yeah, um, yeah. I thought uh, I mean, we were lucky enough to have punter at Ali Pally, but um, yeah. gee, the uh, the old guard really piled in there. And um, two feet, yeah, just yeah, like, two, just like Stokes in the just golf like course, just like Stokes to, to Johnny. <laughs> Allegedly, um, no, nah, we don't know how he got injured, but uh, <laughs> yeah. So like, I mean, I said this to, to punter on stage, but like, um, you know, we know that there was. Uh, I think it's fair to say there's a pretty big um, divide between generations uh the old generation of australian cricket um or the former one we're talking about ponting dos jl etc and the current generation with you know around jl's departure and uh it's been pretty pointed maybe it's still simmering in in a lot of ways maybe they'll pile into cummins once one thing goes wrong who knows Mm, but (laughs) (laughs) but only when things go wrong i do i pile in that's right yeah so when we saw that town new pudsey Uh, that was your reaction but um (laughs) now um but but who would have thought that like <laughs> who would have thought that Ollie Robinson would be such a unifying and healing figure <laughs> yeah, exactly. for both generations right. because you know the new generation won on the field and then mm. the old generation piled in to mm. Ollie Robinson oh. so it was like yeah. we're just getting this ultimate uh, internet wank of, uh, yeah. of of Australia winning a Test match and then my fathers are in the court and again you know like <laughs> yeah, piling right. in and so yeah. I, it's been a good week for Australia but there's still four more games and and I mm. I have to say and maybe this shows you know the cuck that I am but I. I fear reprisal. You know, yeah, like yeah, we're yeah. going to talk about the second test. It looks like it's going to be green. Mm. Uh, England's already omitted their spinner, uh, who I won't name for political reasons. Of course. And uh, and you know, gone with another seamer. And I just got a feeling it's like it, it's it's going to be a little a fifty fifty match. It might be over in a couple of days. There's rain around, and you know, it's if England wins on the internet, it's just going to vindicate Basball and everyone who questioned it was wrong. Yeah, mate. Uh, and I, f- exactly. I fear reprisals, exactly. internet reprisals. It's just going to, it's just going to elevate a little bit more, a little bit more like Australia. Yeah. Like we, we, we built up this series in our heads yeah. and being like, well, can I do it against our boys? And then we had, we had, we, we've tasted success in mm. one game in, mm. in heroic and mm. come from behind mm. underdog ish mm. circumstances. Yes. And then we're like, 
fuck you, England. See how yeah. good it, see how good right. we are. You were wrong. That's we right. were right. We own the truth of cricket. Yeah. You tried to circumvent the yeah. truth of cricket. Now you were we're wrong. the clever ones. Cricket's sad. Cricket's brutal. We're Crick- clever Australians. Yeah, the clever right. little boys. <laughs> we're the clever ones. <laughs> I'm smarter and you Boy, are. You guys are a total slacks. <laughs> the whole local crowd can hear this. <laughs> I shouldn't say, by the way, sixteen-year-old members turning their heads. Who's we a should um, slag. Uh, in in all seriousness, uh, thank um, Jonathan Wilson, who who's um, part owner of this place where we are here, like th- th- this room, and Barney Ronner, who set it up, and Matt Thacker from Wisden, uh, yes. who gave us this space. A Wisden yes. Cricket Podcast is literally two doors down, yes. uh, recording as we as we speak, uh, which mm. is difficult because I like to listen to them before we do our show. Uh, so that, that, that <laughs> yeah. was a problem. I sort of try, I don't know what to, to say. To, yeah, <laughs> I'm just trying to sort of <laughs> crow my ear, uh, uh, crane. Um, yeah, but, anyway. but I, I do fear reprisals because after I fear first reprisals, matches, you know, I was internet just, reprisals, I, yeah, internet reprisals. That's right. Mm. I just, I just thought like, oh well, that's that's the finality because that's that's the end of that test match. Yeah. Series. We've now won the series apparently mm. in our heads. But then England come out and they seem even happier than ever. Yeah. And now it's like, and now when England win because England are, they have good players, and yeah. they have match winners, and they and they will win games if yeah. not game in this series. Yeah, yeah they will games win game. Not game. Yeah, <laughs> games if not game. Yeah. He, he got game. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's 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 uh, this is Dane <laughs> VS, but no, but th- no, this is um, this is a, a problem, like because you s- in in real IRL, you know, flesh stuff, mm. um, f- like f- you know, f- vis-a-vis flesh gear, different to URL. Uh, yeah, that's right. You, you you see people in the flesh, and you mm. discuss the cricket if they're from England. It's it's like, oh no, you guys are good, and like I mm. think you'll do well. And no, no, well, you know, Kawaja, good bat, Kawaja, yeah, yeah. or whatever, yeah, Kawaja, good bat. Yeah, uh, yeah. you know, Warner's got to come good, or mm. or whatever, and you have a nice chat, but. Mm. But then you move away from IRL flesh gear, yeah. and you're in you're in the realm of keyboard reprisals. Yeah, and yeah, I think yeah. that's what that's what that's the what fear is there. Like it, 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 the keyboard reprisal is going to be swift and it's going to be brutal. Yes. Uh, so yeah. really going to need Scott Bowen to hit that, that that area, you know, on the slope. Indeed. Well, do you want to talk about? Um, do you want to talk about? Apparently, I'm just doing some reading here. Apparently, um, one side of the ground is higher than the other side of the yeah, ground. Interesting. That's interesting. Interesting. Stuff. Um, so, uh, in terms of team selections, um, oh, yeah. we have seen just as, just before we threw press record here that Josh Tung mm. Tongi. has, uh, has Tongi. replaced Moeen Ali yeah. uh, in the side. That's the only change. And so, yeah. that's an interesting one in the sense that now they're going to go all out seam. Obviously, Joe Root bolts some um, very tidy overs in the, in the mm. fourth innings of the mm. game there at Edgebaston. Um, so, I, um, if, it, if there's going to be any spin, it's going to be from him, you suspect. Um, they've also got Stokes. I guess there's, a, there's, there's five seamers, though. I don't know how much Stokes is actually going to bowl. Um, though, when he does, he, t- he picks up a wicket. So, there you go. Anyway, so Josh Tung obviously played. He debuted against Ireland. Um, he has been put into the squad. He got a fifer in the second innings of that game for his country on the boost. That was pretty impressive stuff. Not for me. I thought it was absolute fucking junk. But um. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, he's talking to himself again. <laughs> Where am I, daddy? Um so that's so that's a change, and, it, and it's, it's um, it's I don't know what to make of it. I mean, it does it does weaken their batting because uh, Tung will bat ten, so that makes Broad at eight, Robinson nine, Tung ten, Anderson eleven, with Besto at seven. So it does lengthen their tail. Um, but I mean, Moeen hit a couple of fifteens or something, didn't he? So I'm not sure how much he really contributed that Shut. much. But um, but it does it does change the dynamic of the side, and we suspect it's going to be uh, Green Seamer. Yeah, I think that's the indication from the selection of of Tum. Uh, okay, maybe there's um, something to be said for their faith in Moeen or, or his performance last week. Or, well, they brought Roy into the squad. Yeah, that's right. So you're right. They, they, they were prepared for a spin for a spinner to be in the side. Mm-hmm. I think the fact that they select Tung, interesting they select Tung ahead of Potts and, and whatnot. But yeah. um, or Wokes has got an amazing record. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But and yeah, well. the selection of Tung and. Tongue over Mark Wood as well, who's, yeah, that, who's well, that's, fresh that's, and ready. That's, that's the one, yeah. Was um, I think is the biggest indicator that they've had a look at the deck and said it is it's, it's a sideways kind of deck. And well, then isn't, so that, isn't that fascinating? Sorry. Yeah, go on. yeah. I, I mean, uh, yeah. So Tongue can obviously bowl a few more overs than Wood as well if it if it comes to that. Has it come to this? But um, he. Yeah, I, I think this, his selection is really a giveaway for what. Um, deck England is expecting. I think it's really interesting too, given that the first deck that was presented uh, was almost the opposite of what 
I guess we're expecting this time, I and mean, we're we're going to be moving from like a a a flat slow wicket where lots of runs are in front of the wicket, nothing's going behind square, nothing's carrying to the slips to like a I'm not I'm not saying it's a green mumba, but we're just talking about a lot of greenery, uh, verdant if you will, sideways movement, no doubt catches carrying to to the court and. Uh, there's a little bit of rain around as well. So, like, it's the other end of the spectrum. Does basball work that way? I mean, I always thought, m m my prediction is that, like, it brings Australia's Mate, plays into it well, a bit more and it, ch and it tests. It kind of, those kind of decks actually um, reveal the quality or precision of people's techniques. Uh, but maybe not. I mean, maybe that maybe maybe basketball will reveal itself as being a great way to play when it's difficult to score possibly, runs. Uh, possibly, possibly. You know, with with a sideways moving ball. It's tough. It's tough to know what's going to happen. But I agree. It's it's more the selection of tongue than the than the greenness of the wicket. Because like we've seen as an example in New Zealand, which is as I've just researched, an entirely different country, actually in a different part of the world and a different continent. What? But in New Zealand, they've had really green looking decks where you can't you can't really uh, decipher the outfit from the square. Yeah. And it's been like, you know, 500 plays, flat 450, ass, yeah. it's been really flat. Now, yeah. I've not seen that happen in England where it's yeah. been really green, though it might be the case. But I think the giveaway is tongue. Now, it's interesting because like a week and a half ago, Stokes are saying we want fast, flat pitches. We want 59 meter boundaries. Mm. And it, it, uh, Stokes isn't the kind of guy that plays mind games in the media. He, d he doesn't mm. do that. He just sort of, um, he just tells it as it is. And he's mm. been pretty true to his word throughout his career, especially mm. as, since he's been captain. So... I'm just really confused if now they've somehow they they lost a game where they really had every right to win for mm. many parts of that. Look, Australia, Australia was still valued for the for the win. I, I don't think they fluked it, but they do it. They did come from behind in that game, mm -hmm. and England had more chances to win than Australia. Anyway, my point's been made. But like the, the, the to then go, we're going to move away from that kind of wicket on a game that we should have won to make it a green seamer. That's I'm confused. I'm I'm a little bit confused by that because it hasn't been it hasn't been particularly wet in the yeah. UK. It, it, it hasn't been baking hot. I think they overcooked. The, the grounds haven't been wet. People have been, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, it do. Yeah. for yeah. for, for yeah. centuries. Mm. Uh, anyway, so I, d I, mean, I mean, that's, that's it's okay. If, it's okay if um, it's okay if Basball is still iterating as well. I mean, I, I don't think that's true. I don't think they've ever said that. You know, they've they've arrived at the perfect formula it's going to keep like any any kind of innovation it's just going to keep trying to work itself out yeah uh lucky strikes it well salty <laughs> doesn't he smash that's, he it, smashed yeah. that um uh i was actually noting just just again in um in praise of the way these guys play their cricket uh the i just noted that the the first edge at ed, first test at edge baston broke records for the highest peak audience for a test shown on sky sports 2.12 million viewers recorded in the uk Amazing. um average audience of 1.17 tuned in on the fifth day combined average of 877k across all five days so that made it the most watched test on uh, the most watched ashes test on sky ever ahead of the 2009 oval test uh and wow. obviously we're talking about competing ideologies and whatnot but i mean really like um, it's England's remarkable success under its new style that must be drawing audiences into this kind of stuff. And so yep. uh, from a theatre or entertainment perspective, as a bee hovers around us yeah. uh, menacingly... That's good. Uh, get, me, get me a bee bin. Yeah. Um, me a bee bin. Yeah, like uh, for, for them, let, let's say that they've ordered... And you're totally right, caveat, a wicket can look green a day out and then not be that at all. I yeah. mean, laws is normally flat. Yeah. Uh, but if, if they're just going to go the other end of the spectrum and go, well, let's try and do it this way, that's also interesting, you know, with a bit of rain around, and we'll, and we'll see we'll see how it all goes. You know? England have, have preferred to chase since uh, since Stokes took over. Yeah. And I wonder if this pitch will... I mean, they're supposed to be... I mean, we're just fucking guessing now. And yeah, this, exactly. And, and, yeah, and Maybe this will happen. Yeah, exactly. Uh, for the Australians, uh, obviously, they have not announced their team yet because that's not how they like to do things, mm. as with um, basically every team in the history of the, of, of the sport. Mm. But um, I've been thinking about it for a little while, and uh, again, yeah. again, it's just been my experience... It does feel like a long time between these games. Um, Australia didn't have to bowl on the last day, so they, they've, mm. they've, they haven't bowled in now nine days mm. by the time the game starts. I, I wouldn't be that shocked if it's the same team. Yeah. But then, but you then picked I, the first but then, team. You uh, then I could, also th I could also think, well, how, how did Hazelwood pull up, you know? Like, he hasn't played two tests in a couple of years, as Alex Malcolm on the show maybe a month or so ago told us there. Um, and... You know, it, it's a five-test series. It's not a two-test series. I, I just think that Australia's got a good record at Lords, you know, and maybe that doesn't mean anything because, you know, you just play there once every four years and mm. it's just who who's good in the other team. Mm. But, I mean, Australia do play well there. They've actually got a better record at Lords than England do. Um, but, uh, I mean, in the history of 
like England playing mm. there, I mean. But uh, um, I, I just wonder, like, if Australia think, like, oh, we're, we, we can get to 2-0 here. That's, that's it's, it's, I mean, it's not, it's not game over. You need to win three. Yeah. But it's, it's a chance, you know? It's a really big chance. And that's why it's part of the reason why I think winning in Edgebaston was so enormous, winning that way, because in, uh, Australia do play well at Lords. So I wouldn't be shocked if it's the same team again. Or well, they just went. They just went for it and tried to. Uh, yeah. tr- tried to kind of dust Basball yes. before it's worked itself out if against Australia. They think that's their best team. Then, yeah, 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 maybe. I, I, I was um, before the tongue selection. I was of the view that they should play Stark mm-hmm. in that uh, it is a. It's still a five test series, and you must ensure that your bowlers are good to go for the back half of the series as well. That's we so we true, don't yep. know how guys are pulling up. It's very easy to get caught up in the moment and what's needed right now. Mm. Um, but if you know, if, if the boys expend too many carrots bowling, yeah, uh, yeah, worry about the carrots. Yeah, and then um, and you know you're forced to play Stark, and then they can uh, um, they can. Uh, Prepare a deck accordingly, or whatever. Mm. That's difficult. Sam accordingly, uh, halfback. Of course, but, uh, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah. Uh, so I was of the view that you you play Stark, you trust your bowlers. You know, in in those conditions, you trust everybody in the squad to be able to deliver. But mm. now that I've seen it's it's sideways, it's seeming. Uh, I'm I'm not taking out either of like any of like well, obviously not Cummins, but uh, if they're fit. Uh, Hazelwood and um, Boland on a on a green seamer will be licking their chops absolute oh, deluxe. Fuck, their I mean, chops we are saw be soaking wet. I mean, the only sideways we saw in their first test was when was that brief period of rain on mm-hmm. the third day, mm-hmm. and just for about twenty minutes, it was cricket we recognised. So Cummins brought mm. the field in. He was mm. jagging them past root. Mm. Uh, Boland uh, yeah, was on. Bol- Boland yeah. was on doing the same yeah. thing. There was, uh, with Bearstow, it, L- it was going up for LBWs deluxe. It was wobble seam. I mean, you know, Scott Boland's got good form against England when there's a, a bit of seam around. But again, I'm basing this all off uh, the picture of a pitch 24 hours out, yeah, which is probably yeah, the yeah. dumbest thing you can do. I'm, uh, I'm more, I'm just more guessing that if they're picking tongue, then yeah. they also believe it's a seam. I think, I think, I think tongue's a giveaway. I, yeah. I agree. I mean, it, it is, you know what, mate? It's interesting. Isn't it? Interesting isn't, times ahead. Isn't, isn't it just... You know what, mate? I'll be uh, watching. Yeah. <laughs> From my hotel room. Because yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get fuck eyed tonight <laughs> after this last show. No, I'm not. I'm joking. Where am I? Too tired. I yeah, 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 getting too yeah, old and too yeah, tired yeah. for it, to be honest. <laughs> um, other things happening this game. Nathan Lyon will play his 100th test in a row. That's something that he has said that he is really, really proud of. Um, yeah. Don't really understand why for me, but um, mm. pretty simple. Just you know, just be the best spinner in the world. Yeah, that's right. um, Stay fit. I saw a stat since 2013. He's taken more wickets than anyone in test cricket. Yep. Amazing. Um, I mean, for him to play 100 tests in a row is actually remarkable. Not just to stay fit through that time, but well. to be... To be con- his performance to be consistent enough, even uh, even though like what I've seen from him in the last two years, he is he is such a better bowler than what he was. He's better than ever. He, he's yeah, a, he's yeah. actually getting better. And you that's know? yeah, he's, yeah that, that's, he's that's that's what I want to say. I mean, of course he should be better. The than guy, the guy, the guy is team, getting better. He's had 100 yeah. tests in a row, and it's the best he's ever bowled yep. in the last two years. Yep. A genuine match winner for yep. Australia. Feels like he gets seven or eight wickets every game. Mm. He's um he's his ability to win the game in the fourth innings has improved markedly, uh, particularly in the last 12 months. Um, and he's the first specialist bowler to play 100 tests in a row in the history of the game. So the only <laughs> others who've done good. it are, uh, are bats. Sticks, yeah. um, I, think, he, I, think, I think Cook has the most. He's got like 160 right. or something in a row. Mark Ward as well got in there. So Mark, yeah, Mark Ward, Pilates and that. Yeah, There's right. something you didn't know about him. But uh, Speed. He, um, <laughs> he came... So so Nathan Lyon, you know, he came after Horrocks, Marcus North, Bo Casson, Cameron White, uh, Michael Beer, Bryce McGain, Steve Smith wow. as a bowler. Um yeah, 79 wickets at 24 in Australia's last 15 tests. Uh, it, it got real for Gary in the Australian team. It was He played 122, I want to say, and I will. Uh, mm. It was in and out of the side before these, you know, last 100. Okay. It got real for him when Huss handed him the song. Oh, yeah. And so I think it's right, a lesson yeah. to all of us in terms mm. of the way you prosecute a song in the sheds. Enormously. Do you know what I'm saying? I know exactly um, what you're saying. I'm saying if you want to stay in that third grade side, yeah. you make sure you strike that bin. And if you want Mate, to a wear a court jester hat and a G string, mm-hmm. as guys I know did, mm. uh, th- they were mainstays at the club. Mm. So court jester hat, G string, mm. striking an auto bin with yep. the right timber yes. at the right point of the auto bin, yep. uh, green. 
if you will, yeah. uh, that's actually going to help you stay in that side. Now, some people will be like, well, I don't mm. want to stay in fours. I want to go up the grade. So that's yeah. that's your issue yeah, to sort out. I mean, I think I think you're sort of chasing the dragon there a little bit. I yeah. think you should be happy in the team, just like and just know where you're playing. Well, if someone's oh, if someone and says that you've got to, yeah, you're great at the song, you must stay in that side, then you got to respect that. Um, Nathan Lyons actually wanted to get out of the Australian side for quite a long quite, time, but they the handed him the song. Yeah, he's wanted yeah. to retire for years. Yeah. Uh, he's got a property portfolio. <laughs> that's the whole thing. <laughs> he's doing uh, NFTs now. Yeah, he got NFTs. Yeah. Uh, I'm not <laughs> suggesting for one second that he also wears a court chester hat or a g-string when he does the song. Well, you don't genuinely, need to. you don't need to. Um, I don't need to do that. Uh, yeah. No, there was just there was just a guy at the Tigers who. Choose that. your own adventure stuff, yeah. that one, yeah. Um, yeah, however you want to do it. But I'm, I'm just saying, I think, uh, again, the, the once again in cricket, the lead has been buried. People want to talk about 79 wickets at 24, what he did at, uh, you know, indoor, what he did at Lahore last year. Right, right, right. Um, this, is, uh, this is a story about a song uh, and his ownership of the song mm. and what that means for the longevity of, uh, of his career. Something very fascinating and something to think and about And G-strings. Well. Yeah, of course. <laughs> we also saw him... Uh, uh, chucked down a couple of first pitches there at the Olympic Stadium there yeah. with, uh, with Jimmy Anderson. Jimmy did him there, oh, so also, that was that was that was, that was half a point to England uh, yeah, online. I know, I know, it was disappointing. Yeah. Actually, makes you really think about uh, George George W. Bush's pitch after 9/11 at Yankee Stadium, where he fucking throws it right down the middle. Yeah, that's a good pitch. That. That's, the, that's the greatest pitch of all time. Yeah, that's, that's the first good pitch shot. of all time. He good swagger walking to the mound as well. Oh yeah, he's wearing a bomber jacket. Yeah, uh, it's high high pressure, high stressing yeah. nails. Yeah. Look that look that up on YouTube if you fancy it. If you've yeah. got sort of uh, 90 seconds to yourself, yeah, uh, while you're cleaning up your belly button. But then, but then, yeah, yeah, but then. But then go down the rabbit hole of some of the greatest things you ever said. You know, like, <laughs> like I believe human beings and fish can coexist peacefully. <laughs> or, or fool me once, shame on you. Yeah. <laughs> fool, fool me once, can't get fooled again. <laughs> and all saying in Texas, he's like, well, t- Tennessee is probably Texas too. <laughs> um, Nathan Lyon is. Uh He's five wickets away from 500, so you think he'd be a shout in this game. Though, yeah, you would. If he if he gets a bowl, because Australia's obviously got uh, they'll have the three seamers and Cameron Green as can, well. Can, so, I swear, uh, well, can I just mention one more thing about Australia, just from a, um, uh, a, a cultural perspective? Uh, yeah. and, and I think people want us to pick up on this. Uh, people who've been sort of uh, hanging about the Australian team in the last couple of days. We're here, we're here in London, uh, and you know, so so with the Lords Test, it's pomp and ceremony stuff now. You know, they're in they're in Birmingham, mm. uh, you know, Midlands, so cent- central central UK. It's very sort um, of not of the Poms. Uh, yeah, you know. but you come you come down here to Lords, and that's that's when uh, some of the old money comes out. They've been at the High Commission. You know, Stephen Smith, the the um, I think is the ambassador. I don't know what the fuck he is. Um, not uh, not the cricketer Steve Smith. He's interviewing um, he's interviewing Cummins. It's the, it, people are dressed nicely. It's mm-hmm. a big it's an all in Aussie affair, and it's a, it's a, it's a bit of a um, I wouldn't say siege mentality, but when Aussies get together in the UK, it's just nice. Mm. Uh, and, we go to the walkabout for breakfast, uh, <laughs> lunch and dinner. And uh, Oscar Piastri has been around the Aussie team. Right. But I also noticed. Um, on the coaching staff in cricket Australia gear is Joel Selwood, yeah. uh, the yeah. the Geelong. Stalwart, Geelong yes. footy stalwart. Yeah. Now, I want to say something controversial here, he goes, because ordinarily the nexus of Aussie rules and cricket mm. uh, irritates me greatly, particularly given Aussie rules was invented to keep cricketers fit. Yeah. Uh, it, it's very much the other way around now. Um, Shane Warne was just staying fit in his career yeah. in case St Kilda picked him up, and he was the greatest to do it. Yeah, one of the greatest players the world has ever seen, perhaps in any sport, and he didn't even want to do it first. Yeah, exactly. I... I I don't know if it was the hue of the, if it's the hue of the sky uh, or I, I have a fundamental respect for Joel Selwood as as a as a footy player. Sure. I felt quite safe seeing his face in Cricket Australia gear. You've been in Melbourne too long. No, mate. I I as, uh, okay. That's true. That's true. Um, my, my family in Sydney's been saying that uh, for a long time, <laughs> so I, I, I have to accept I have to accept that criticism. He is. But it make you feel good. He's a person I will make an exception for. From the footy um, okay. community, okay. being in cricket Australia gear, uh, I'm I'm more of, I'm still going to be um, skeptical and cynical. Yeah, but he's just got he's just got the face of an on baller. Uh, he, he's mm. it's gr- it's grizzled, and I I just he had, it was this cool moment uh, when he walked on the he came out to the field for the grand final last year where the Swans got pumped as well. Uh, I think he was with his kid, and it was uh, yeah, just so that that this, that yeah. soft strong combination mm. as well that really gets me going from a masculinity perspective. Sure. But uh, Joel Selwood's sort of in the siege mentality, in the pomp and ceremony, and like the the old gentry of of England mm. having a Joel Selwood there, mm. it just makes me, it makes me feel a little bit like okay, let's put our differences aside, Aussie rules, and let's go and fuck these palms. You know what I'm saying? 
I thought... That's out. That looks out. I thought it? that Oscar Piastri has done very well to get himself a Guernsey there. Yeah. Uh, I saw Nathan Lowell roll out some offies to him, uh, and he was calling him a natural. It looked to me like he'd never played cricket in his life. Yep. Um, but and that it would be great know, if Nathan Lyon said, "You are dog shit, mate." I, I need. I just need a couple. I need a couple more. No, no. I need at least one more season of Drive to Survive. Yeah. So I can get behind Piastri a little right, bit more. Right, you know, right, he's, right. He's, with, he's with McLaren. You know, I haven't watched like, it. Like sort of Dan mm. Ricardo, if he's in the mix, he's obviously yeah. friends with Stoinis. Yeah. Um, and uh, the other guy, I can't think of his name, the snowboarder. Um, Scotty James and uh, you know I like, I like that little triumvirate but yeah. Oscar Piastri just uh, so far he hasn't done it, he hasn't done enough for me to warrant being around the group for the Lord's Test match just yet yeah. I, you know like I, if you get they me around like I, want, I want sheer athleticism I want to be like we're fucking big brutish Australian men you probably, probably want we Ruth. hunt pigs oh yes we are super pigs yeah that's we wear RM Williams yeah. and we're happy yeah play the stereotype rum. Yeah, and we drink schooners because otherwise it gets too hot. We can't handle a full. Pot. A certain type of Australian. That's a very specific type. Yeah, there are a lot of Australians descending on lords. I know, like uh, Peter Hellier and Tom Gleeson are doing a show tonight. It, it makes me feel good, you know. Like mm. you, 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 well, there, right, there are. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. There are. Um, yeah, it's just little nods going around. I mean, yeah. Australians feel good at lords. We feel. We feel like. I mean, we've only lost. Um, we were on the team now. Mm. We only lost twice since 1934. Yeah, there or some shit. Record. It's 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 pretty formidable. We we like it. We we do get up and about for a lords, if yeah, you will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, I don't know. But they they've looked at Josh Tongue. So, um, <laughs> I don't know. Okay, should we talk to Barney now? Yes, we should talk to Barney well, before, before our uh, before our friends that get a nod. Uh, before that, uh, we are thanking, of course, Budgie Smuggler. Budgie Smuggler, a huge part of the reason we're able to make this trip out. Uh, it's budgiesmuggler.com.au for all your swimwear needs. We're talking hats, shirts, stubby holders, everything for your summer. It's not just summer though, of course, Pez, because they've actually got some uh, so some winter warmers. If you are in Australia, yeah. don't just don't just think we're just talking to people in the UK here, Pezza. Mm, we're also okay. looking at winter warmers. I'm also looking at some of the uh, some of the selections though for your for your swimwear. I know a lot of people are either about to embark in Australia mm, on mm. a European uh, adventure, a yep. sojourn, if you will. Mm, I will. Um, you know, you're looking at uh, you're gonna be looking real smart in your budgie smugglers. You, I'll you tell got, you who was looking smart in their budgies. Uh, Ryan Sidebottom. Ryan Sidebottom. We had Ryan in Leeds uh, and gave him a budgie gift pack. He um, immediately went and modelled it uh, from his house. I believe he was ironing his underwear or some oh, such he thing. Making, he was making breakfast. In made his breakfast in his in his budgies. And I tell you what, like big man, but the rig the rig is in pretty decent shape yeah, to, yeah. to go. Uh, he's, he's got real pro athlete body. Yeah, he does, isn't yeah. he? Yeah, that must be nice. Given oh, to pro athlete's foot, which is a, a, a separate issue. That's yeah, that's a that's a uh, extra tier. Yeah, uh, it's like that you get to. Pro. You can't go to yeah. I- athlete's foot. Up, uh, yeah, you, you, you've got pro athlete's yeah. foot. Yeah. Where, no, I'm looking for pro athlete's foot. It's like upstairs cargo. You know. What I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you can use the code Good Areas for free shipping at budgiesmuggler dot com. If you want to, be, if you want, if you want to be in Australia, you can go budgiesmuggler dot com dot au. The code is Good Areas, all one word, all lowercase. Mm. Yet free shipping. It's valid in both the UK and Australia. Go and check them out. Here he is. Here's the great man live from the Oval, where a cricket match is happening, and there's a woman crying over there for some reason. Aren't we all, madam? Here's Barney Rone. Well, a very special moment for us to actually be in the human flesh. With this man, uh, he's been a great servant to the show. Not that I'm sure he appreciates being called a servant. Uh, and we're doing this here at the Oval, as organised by him, we, and we appreciate it. Um, Barney Rone from the Guardian, welcome to the great cricketer in the human flesh. Yeah, hi. I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm comfortable with this. I think I, <laughs> I prefer like screens and yeah, 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 thousands yeah. of miles oh, between us. Yes. It's kind of intimidating. But yeah. But I, I'm going to give it a go. You were very much our second choice for this because Andrew Tate was not available. <laughs> <laughs> I can do. I can do Andrew Tate. I can do that. Do bits. Do, do, do press ups recently. and don't vape. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, we had to. We had to have you on Barney because I, I feel like post uh, Edge Baston, um, you, you wrote the piece that pleased me most, <laughs> um, exploring as an Australian, but 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 exploring the uh, the. The cult of baseball, and you did, you know, anyone with one sort of um, iota of comprehension skills would note that you, you sort of presented it as a question, you know, is it a cult? But that's not what a lot of the responses were online. Uh, I um, just wanted to get your early reactions to, um, you know, for, for those who haven't read the piece, just go and read it, use the internet. But uh, 
to, to the online response to it because I felt like it was quite um, fundamentalist from a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, strange that, isn't it, that you could you could identify things that are kind of slightly cult-like, perhaps, and a, an excessive devotion, a kind of mad tribalism. And in order to disprove that, hundreds of people blindly assert that you're 100% wrong, <laughs> insane, <laughs> evil, bias. <laughs> I don't know if you scan down... Miserable, the, I, the, saw, the, I saw the, that. Uh, well... Fair. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you scan down the warning signs of cult-like behavior, I'd think probably kind of mass unthinking, angry, herd-like devotion, probably one of them. So I, I felt that the, that was kind of the proof was in the, um, in the furious online response with that one. But I mean, it is more, I don't think it's necessarily an insult to call it cult-like. I mean, most sporting teams that succeed have cult-like aspects. I mean, if you... It often just, just having something that brings you together is a good thing. I think what made it interesting after Ishbeston was the idea that there can be no reflection on this. You have to double down. Um, there, I, I was at Pep Guardiola. I didn't talk about football, but I was at I Pep Guardiola's press conference when he said in his first season when he was losing and it was people were sort of piling in saying, who's this bald fraud? The worst kind of fraud, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> believe me. Uh, and he, he, uh, people, he said, what is tackles? And everyone sniggered behind their hand. Oh, he's, what is tackles? He's not ready. He's gonna the thing about Guardiola <laughs> is it, there's a cult-like thing around his methods, but he is constantly evolving. If you said to him, don't analyze, always look forward, do the same thing, run towards the danger, he'd say, you, no, you don't do that. You know, you, you analyze exactly what you've done a million times. And that seems to me sensible. The idea that you cannot question Basball because Basball will therefore collapse suggests to me there's something wrong with Basball, if that really is true. And I don't, I don't know if that is true, but that's the... And so that was where the idea of it being slightly cult-like came from. And, and I hope that they carry on playing like that because it is gripping and brilliant and I love it. Mm. But um, I do also like analyzing things and looking at them. Yeah. And I think it's more oh interesting. God forbid, you know, you ask some questions about it. That, that's what... Mm. Uh, that's what I really liked about the piece. I like how it began with uh, Mike Brealey's response to Basball, saying that uh, Basball was a response to depression. Mm. Uh, you kind of alluded to bruised masculinity. Mm. Uh, we keep getting shushed at the moment. Sorry, uh, <laughs> talking in hushed tones here. Uh, and uh, and I think that's where a lot of the uh, bemusement from Australia comes from as well. Is that. Uh, you know, here is this team that's had some remarkable success playing with kind of a cultish, fundamentalist, evangelical fun uh, when we've spent 140 years playing cricket on the premise that it is a sad and brutal game and have developed, like, tactics and strategy around it. And so there's this, like, duality of, like, this fascination about can... Like, have we been wrong all along about how we should be playing this game? And then also this fear that it could be correct and we want to actually dismantle that immediately and it just makes me think like if basketball is a response to depression or bruised masculinity or just the sadness of the game i mean how sad were england you know <laughs> <laughs> well, th going two, into I mean, it there's two things about that english cricket is has also it's been the cruelest sporting world you know for 150 years it's brutal you know you um the game is cruel by nature you know it's an individual sport masquerading as a team sport um you know people have done terrible things to themselves down the years i remember one ex-pro telling me a story about walking into a dressing room um after his, his opening partner had got out for 14 or something and such a few years back and i'm finding him uh setting fire to his own arm with a lighter just very gently and he's saying, what on earth are you doing? Fucking hell. And, and he said, I know, it's fine. If I do this, I will remember the pain and I won't get out like that again and just calmly walking off. And th I mean, I'm sorry that that's a disturbing story. No, it's, it's good. It's kind of self-harm and unpleasant, but it wasn't the guy's fine. You know, that's just cricket. And it is a cruel, brutal game, as we all know. And, and I think there's a sense of end of days with Test cricket. Some very powerful players, mm. they don't need this game. They're rich for life they want to try and make themselves feel good then good luck to them why not play it in a in a fun i think there's a sense that people have slightly taken their eye off it and you can do whatever you want really it's test cricket come on this is the last party before the the rapture isn't it so <laughs> why not have some fun <laughs> i'd also say that i don't think it's without cruelty this way as well i know it's all fun and we're all mates and we're all playing golf and mm. blah 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 but it's another clique 
if you're not in that clique, if you're being told the way you play is wrong, you're not like us, you're not one of the lads, you've not been to the IPL, you're, you're still being excluded for some reason that's beyond your control. What if you've grown up like Dom Sibley being told to just leave every ball and that you're getting the t and now you're being told sorry everything you've ever done is wrong it's an exclusive clique like every other clique it's another way of saying i'm sorry you're not one of us it, it, i don't know if it's any more open than cricket has ever been but certainly if you play goal for ben stokes you're likely to be in the team there's something there's something about uh which baseball which sort of strikes the heart of um of truth truth of cricket you know in like in the, in the same way that uh, you know the league table apparently doesn't lie and, you know, the best team in cricket often wins. I mean, actually always wins because in test cricket, the best team just outskills you. They have the better players and someone will do something eventually and they win the game. And then I see, like, Stuart Broad in between these two test matches saying that Zach Crawley's four of the first ball was his favourite ever Ashes moment. And, like, as an Australian, I'm like, no, it's not. Like, you took eight for 14 or something once. You know, Ben Stokes did the most amazing thing ever four years ago and Zach's hit a four that just it's just not your favorite memory it just can't be yeah. and as an Australian I'm like why are you lying to me you know well Stuart Broad's good isn't he he's he, good he's, he's, <laughs> he's brilliant you know he's had a really long career <laughs> lots of different coaches and captains I mean I kind of believe everything Stuart Broad says because I think when he says it he means it and it has right. some good sort of purpose behind it um, I've, I've increasingly loved Stuart Broad and think mm. that whatever he says is, is worth listening to. But, I mean, I know what they're trying to say. Um, and they're sort of gassing each other up and there's a kind of feeling of momentum. Because what do you do when that good feeling... I mean, they've lost two of their last three test matches. And there's a question of, like, are we doing the right thing? Is this... Can we sustain this thing? And, and I kind of wish they weren't putting themselves in that position. Mm. That's the problem with it being a cult. Like, there's a thing about resilience and about learning and about changing, which I think are all really good human instincts, more than simply having one plan, which you repeatedly do again and again, because it's the best plan and you've reinvented something from the grassroots up. So I do wonder what will happen if Lords doesn't go well. Because how... I think Basball itself has a short shelf life, and I think that it, that's... That's hardwired into it. It's exhausting to captain That's that team. That's interesting, yeah. Imagine yeah. how tired Stokes is at the end of 400 runs in the field when he's constantly thinking every ball is not dozing off for 10 overs at slip. Yeah. Um, he, he, you know, he looks ravaged. This is not a long-term plan. It's thrilling and brilliant. I love watching him sort of throw his body onto the fire like this, but it's, it's, it's even exhausting to watch at times. Mm. Yeah. How exhausting do you think online will be uh, if... England wins the next game uh, <laughs> for Australians because there's, there's five tests to go. There's obviously two parts to the Ashes. There's on the field and then there's the internet. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, it feels like this could be the most exhausting kind of internet battle, uh, at least that, that cricket's seen away from India yeah, uh, we, for quite some time. We have to get through four more of these. And I felt like Edgbaston was like a lifetime of cricket. So yeah. much happened. Yeah. I went on a journey from Lord Harris to Owen <laughs> Morgan in, in those four or five days of just um, obviously eating sort of massive, quite stodgy meals in between <laughs> your breakfast, lunch and tea. I don't know if you had the same problem, but it was it was absolutely grueling. And, and Lords, obviously, because it's kind of a home of cricket where everything is, there won't be the same atmosphere. There's a strangely kind of repressed hush at Lords. Yeah. And that's the sound of cricket. And how, how's that going to interact with basketball, we'll have to talk about the slope a lot. I don't know if you're ready of for course. that. I don't know if you know. Yeah, there's, I'm a, ready. there's actually a slope. Is there? Is there? Yes, oh, there's oh, there's really there. Yeah. That's interesting. If you look back at some old videos. You know, you, you <laughs> see the ball, the ball. But you know, we'll have to deal with all of that as well, woven into the mixture. Mm. And it's really, really important for the series. I think that England win. I, I'm not saying that because I care who wins the Ashes particularly. I just want it to be good yeah. and for it to exist. But if Engl if England lose, I think there could be a total implosion. And um. I think Australia might bowl really well there, and the the kind of there might be a visible strength. You know, the, you know the the sort of meme of the guy who's got veins bulging out of his forehead oh, yeah. and is sweating, <laughs> and he may be in a kind of high school cafeteria yeah. scenario. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's oddly sexual. Yeah. Um, yes. I think that may be the basball meme <laughs> of Lords. I don't know. There could be explosions. But if it goes the um, other way, then it's going to be complete vindication, uh, and you know the knives will be out for anybody who questioned it uh, at any point. Well, I think it's important important to say that the knives are out on all sides yes like the reason why there was yeah. such a visceral reaction to me saying ha ha look at basketball it's funny it's a cult it's a bit like andrew tate you know masculinity people are drawn to strange kind of lonely places involving men uh, all that kind of stuff <laughs> um w which was intended as a joke even though it doesn't sound very funny now i'm saying it it sounds <laughs> awful <laughs> and, and it you know crazy. please do look after yourself everyone yeah. out yeah. there you know yeah. it's okay be kind um uh 
there's there's the knives are out in England as well. The 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 thing about Baz Boy is it's all about the super ego. You are reacting to someone. You're saying that thing that you were, everything you did, everything under your time was wrong, and we are reacting against it. Mm. Who is the person they're thinking of when they say we're not going to be? Is it Alistair Cook? Is it Joe Root's captaincy? Is it Jonathan Agnew? Like, it's <laughs> one of these people. <laughs> there is somebody who is the dartboard for basketball. Yeah. Maybe it's Chris Silver. I don't know. It's maybe Jacob Rees-Mogg. Yeah, yeah, maybe it's yeah. every coach you had at every age group who stood there in a track and saying, that's crap and you're crap. You know, I don't know, but there's some collective superego. And I know that the people watching it, while saying, this is wonderful, they're winning games, you know, the guys in the punditry seats, the, yeah. people who, the chief you know, cricket writer, yeah. they're all slightly thinking, you're saying what I did was rubbish and I kind of want you to do well and then fail. And the knives really will be out. I know it. I can see it. I've spoken to people. The kind of the Bush Telegraph behind all this is a bit like, did you hear what they said? Yeah. They do, you know, they, their knives really will be out for them. It and it, it will it come from all sides. It is very like anti-establishment baseball, isn't it? And un- you have to kind of respect the blind aggression to, to which like they're saying, like, we're not going to change. Like what you're talking about, what his tackles, um, you know, like that, that idea that we're just going to keep doing things forever our way. The opposition doesn't matter. And to that end, like... England keep picking teams like a week and a half before the first balls bowl. They've already announced their team the day before the, um, the match. We've seen the state of the pitch. It seems very green. I don't know what that means just yet. But um, that level of like blind aggression and anti-establishment um, ideology, I suppose, I think it, like England will win a game. England will win games in this series, I'm sure of it. But I think the ultimate question is that we're trying to figure out, is it good? Is it, is it truth? Are we happy? You know? It's kind of truth when it works. If it wins, yeah. If it were, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like that thing where you say, break every rule. And that's the only rule. And if you break that rule, <laughs> I'm going to be really angry. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say you're not one of the group and anymore. And don't talk about Fight Club. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of, there are rules here. And the rules are, we're going to act like there are no rules. It's kind of punk yeah. to a strict set of guidelines. <laughs> and I don't think that they've quite thought, they remind me sometimes of people who are like on a year off. You know when you've you've like been to a really strict private school and you go to Thailand and the first guy <laughs> you meet who says, "Do you know what? We're just a tiny sort of dot in space and like you know, maybe we're all one." Yeah. yeah, and like maybe your dad's just a square and that's what <laughs> blows your mind. And, and these England players, you know, they they haven't been on a year off. They haven't worn <laughs> spandex trousers on a beach in Goa. They haven't done it. This is their year off. I feel like they're learning and they're sort of yeah. slightly in that phase of like I don't think they've really thought it through. <laughs> I mean, the Guardiola comparison, his team this year, they got four centre-backs. They tackle all the time. Yeah. He said that, but he changed. Yes, yes, he didn't yes. S- He's not stuck to one thing, doing pep ball, saying this is the... You know, he won by changing. Mm. And I don't think saying we're just going to do the same thing is good. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a really rigid rule book right. with no rules. Yeah, yeah. Well, what would Brearley say to that, though, Barney, as in, you know, m- maybe... Uh, are you concerned or have you contemplated whether... I- indeed they're correct you are a square as an englishman and that you need to change i but i i have absolutely no doubt about that and <laughs> I, I have no idea what the right thing is to do but i think really would say that's progress he would say right. that is good mm. you now we can start building you've admitted you know nothing it's just when people start telling me they do know everything or that we have an answer that you start mm. thinking well okay you are the first person in human history to actually have an answer to everything you know, good luck with that when, mm. um, you know, it's nibbling around and Scott Byland's got three for six at Lords. And yeah. He's, he's not that bothered about the slope. Well, Glenn, mm. Glenn McGraw seemed okay with the yeah. slope. Yeah, he did okay. He, he what, did okay. Okay, uh, simple question. What do you think of England's team for the second test? Um, I think it's good not to play a spinner if your spinners just aren't very good. I mean, one of the things about the first test is it seemed like they were saying Moan Ali played really well. Um, well, they did say that. They said he bowled really well. It's clearly not true. He did not bowl very well, uh, and his finger didn't work, and he didn't bat very well either. But I think maybe that may have been... I was really annoyed to hear them saying that, because I thought, well, now's a moment to say, well, let's learn from what we did. But maybe the selection suggests they've said we don't really have a spinner, so that's good. Um, and they clearly think it's going to seem around. I think Jimmy Anderson's a really big player in this game. Mm. He was a bit rusty. You forget that he's really old, and you do need to keep ticking over maybe a bit more than he was, mm. and he'll bowl well there, and I think the series could be in in his hands. Um, mm. But Australia will bowl well too. It's um, the, the thing England are battling all the way through this is I think Australia's players uh, are often slightly better, um, and that's just a fact if you look at the numbers. And we got by by saying Usman Khawaja's never scored a run in England, but 
mm. sort of has now. Mm. Um, mm. Uh, I heard that. I believe it was as we were walking to the ground, the Barmy Army guy with his uh, yeah, like that busker, harmonica and yeah. The, yeah, the busker was singing, have you ever seen Kawaja score a run? He changed though, Kawaja. he changed to Warner by, by about day three. That's good for us. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's a if he could sing that on the way to Lords, that'd yeah, be that'd be good. Yeah. 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 Um, Barney, can you, can you understand the uh, the ire that Ollie Robertson has created in the hearts of Australian ex-players? Like, and and I, go, I get the sense that the ex-players, they, they sense blood in some capacity. I'm not sure what blood it is, but they sense blood a little bit in that they want to be standing in the slips cordon again. You know, we've had Matthew Hayden say he's a very forgettable cricketer. Ricky Ponting is sort of representing the country in the commentary box when he's fighting against KP. Um, and, uh, and now Michael Clark is saying like, well, you know, he's got to back it up. Who is this guy? We know nothing about him, even though he's taken... JL some, got in there as well. J, JL's in there. And I feel, I feel good. I feel like it's 2000 and mm. let's say one, because that's when we won here last time. Um, but can you understand why it's wound Aussies up so much? Yes, but I think they've got the wrong guy. I think they secretly like Ollie Robinson. I think this is going to... I mean, Ollie Robinson is a really blunt bloke. He's a bloke from Margate. Um, he's <laughs> actually... <laughs> A good bowler. Yeah. Um, he's actually what? like, he can yeah. bat. Um, he's a good cricketer. Mm. His record is really good. He mm. did well in Australia. Um, I think they've got the wrong guy. I think they secretly like him and it's all going to end up with everyone kissing. I mean, I just <laughs> think it's the wrong, they've got the wrong guy. I think maybe this is... But after the fifth test, like they're all in the rooms and yeah, that. Yeah, it's yeah. like that mural on the there, Berlin Wall. like, yeah, oh, you're actually six out. or five, I quite like you. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you're kind of cute. Yeah. But no, I think they've got the wrong guy. I think, I think they want to really dislike Basball and he's the only person who's actually spoken out in a slightly spiky, aggressive way, mm. which is kind of his way, I think. I think he's pretty unpopular with English fans as well of a certain type because he isn't very reconstructed. He said some dumb things. He was a, there's a bit of WhatsApp message scandal, mm. uh, which he kind of, you know, one of those things really. Um, no, I think that Australia will grow to like him in the way I kind of think they sort of like, you guys sort of like Broad in a way or get him. Yeah. Um, if you take your Robinson and your Broad away, like the Ashes kind of collapses, doesn't it? Without someone mm. to genuinely mm. dislike. Um, yeah, if it was like Wokes in the side, who's just completely inoffensive yeah, with a nice yeah. haircut. Yeah. It's, it's a lot more familiar as well. Isn't Stokes yeah. more of a threat as well? Because yeah. you have to admire him in some ways. Yes. You can't really dislike Stokes. Yes. Mm. Um, whereas this, is, I think, is something to latch on to, mm. which is familiar and feels good. Sure, mm. sure. And we like, should be grateful. Yes. Yeah. I think he's feeding the tradition. You know, he's yeah. like a dog whistle. Yes. It's like the Brexit bus. Here's Ollie Robinson <laughs> to keep <laughs> Matthew Hayden. You can say, look, you, yeah, look, he bowls 79 miles an hour. That's right. I, I'm happy. Yeah. insulting for that. red meat to the base yeah, you know yeah right? exactly yeah. Yeah. I think I think it will be fine by the end of, I think there'll be people to dislike a lot more yeah. by the end of it like mm. maybe maybe the wrong Ollie there I think um, <laughs> a tough segue here but uh, on your, uh, your 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 paper The Guardian uh, the headlines today as we woke up this morning day before Lord's English cricket is racist sexist and elitist says landmark report uh, an independent commission Finds problems widespread. Uh, ECB chair recognises need for significant reform. I'm, I mean, I'm just reading those headlines verbatim because I'm just r- I'm conscious as an Aussie, or when you're not from you know the, the country in play, um, making comments about uh, issues like this, I think can be a little bit unbecoming. So, uh, you know, what uh, what do you make of of this latest report? It seems to be something that's been um, being explored, bubbling away for quite a few years. Well, yeah, for a, about 150 years. I mean, <laughs> the the report is 100% accurate in what it says. Uh, it's not news, although it is news that obviously, and it's it's great that this is being looked at properly. Um, the first report of this kind was in 1997, uh, when the ECB itself commissioned a report which told it very clearly all of these things and it was genuinely shocking and Tim Lamb who was then the head of the ECB or the chairman or whatever said the same things oh my god this is terrible we've got to do something about this Um, the fact that 26 years later we're having the quarter of a century later we're having the same problems forced into the light because of media scrutiny not because of anything else not from with anything within uh, this is all because of a storm of events beyond cricket combined with the, I am going to call it 
uh, Alain Cohen says, bravery and honesty of people like Azim Rafiq mean that this is now unavoidable and your corporate sponsors um, want you to now root this out, that this is happening. So, but the end result is good, or the, the end result is not the report, the end result is what you do about it, because we've had this before. And I spoke this morning to Lonsdale Skinner, who's, I guess must be in his 70s now, he used to play here at Surrey, um, and that was in the 60s, and you can imagine what he went through. He's head of um, the African Caribbean Cricketers Association here, is the loveliest man on earth, and he said, yeah, I'm, I'm delighted this report's come out, I'm also feel sad that these are things I've been saying for 30 years which nobody has wanted to listen to even when I set up an organization to talk about them even when we had Tom Harrison paying lip service to the I mean this is a terrible report for Tom Harrison and he deserves all of the reflected opprobrium he will receive um, because he should have commissioned this he should have done this years ago um, and Lonzo just said, I'm, I'm really pleased it's out there, but I think about the fact that nobody listened before. And maybe now, he said, the recommendations are good, but they need to go further and they need to be absolutely locked in. And then maybe cricket. I mean, the thing is, it's sports. Sports are supposed to be good. Like, all of these problems exist in society. Cricket's not making them exist. But sport is supposed to bring people together and to be a thing that says, look, we are the opposite of this. You know, we're just a bunch of human beings trying to do something fun together. Um, and um, the pigment of your skin or whatever branch of society you come from, what your gender is, completely irrelevant. It's so obvious this is what sport should be saying. Not reinforcing the structures outside sport that say, uh, we are not going to accept that, we're going to hoard power and access to ourselves. And cricket, for too long, has been the opposite. It has been a way of walling itself up behind existing privilege and saying, I'm sorry, this is something for us. And it's so easy to flip that switch and go the other way. And maybe that will annoy a few people. Maybe there'll be a few things people don't like. Maybe that will involve positively going the other way and saying, look, we need to get people in who are not from you and from that. And it will, in the end, even itself out so that everybody on merit has equal access to this great thing that we all love. Um, but something has to be done quite violently to make that happen. And to make, there's enough money to go around. There's enough access. There's enough places to play. Um, but something has to happen to stop cricket reflecting the worst of society and to become a thing that amplifies the best and this is a step towards that happening so it's entirely welcome and if you're moaning about it or feeling uncomfortable or saying this is all wokery is going the wrong way then you are the problem and just suck it up and the game will still exist you can still play you can still come and watch and it's still good i think that's a good uh a good place to wrap things up not because i disagree with you uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, but that, that was very cool. Barney, uh, thanks so much for joining us in person in the human flesh. I'm sorry um, it was, it's, it's awkward because we're, you know, like sort of in the same um, space now. Yeah, um, we can return to screens later. If physically you still want to intimidating. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, just yeah. The whole thing is, is terrible. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm having a shocking time. Um, I've been drinking all morning, so I actually won't remember this. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I would have been much better if I could have just held the screen up and watched it. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> We'll do that possible. next time. Yeah. It'll be a fly screen or something. Uh, <laughs> thanks so much for joining us, mate. Um, and I uh, don't know what else to say. All right, cheers. See you. And now we must thank our dear friend also, Shane Watson. For shamewatson.au is the website, Pezza. Shamewatson.au, where you can buy Winning the Inner Battle. You can buy it on paperback, audiobook, or even ebook. And you can buy it from anywhere in the world. Let me give you some reviews here, Pezza. Brett Lee said, simple process to be able to use in all aspects of life. RT Ponting says, train your skills, train your body. Now it's time to train your mind. And Faf Duplessis, he says, till this day, I still use it before every game. And I reckon Faf could play for another 40 or 50 years the way his skin is looking. In fact, in terms of crow's feet, I don't think Faf has ever had crow's feet. No way. He's, he's never had crow's he's feet. Ab he's a Nivea night cream every day of the week and then cucumbers on his eyes. <laughs> he's looking a million bucks as always. And that's because... He couldn't possibly get crow's feet. Battle. Sorry, yeah, we we're still promoting winning the inner battle. Mm. Uh Yep, no, no, nothing else to add to that other than it's a very, very good book, very, very good tome. Get it at shanewatson.au. All right, uh, let's talk about the, uh, the women's test match just gone and the women's Ashes yep. more broadly speaking. Result. Uh, Australia has basically already won the Ashes yep. uh, after one clean test match. And As we requested. Before. Yes. So it was actually, it was a, it was actually ended up being a fucking stunning game. It was a great game. It was a fucking great game of cricket. Uh, look, I've got the scores up here. Uh, where am I? Okay, so Australia... Hit 473 in the first innings. That was thanks to Elise Perry's 99, just falling short. 
of another 100 against England. But Annabelle Sutherland came in at 8 in that 137 off yeah. 184. Oh, that's good. To get the score up to 473. Um, England making Australia wobble, yeah, I mean, and then you d- and then you just have Gardner and uh, Sutherland come in oh. and do some business. Oh, um, just Sophie just Eccleston, too deep. Best bowler in the world. She took yeah. five for 129 in the first innings. Now yeah. England reply hit 463, so they mm. finished 10 runs behind. Yeah, one innings game. That was because Tammy Beaumont hit 208. Uh, as we learned last week, Tammy Beaumont also hit a double hundred in the warm up game. Mm. Um, that was against Australia. A hates that runs. Side, so uh, hates runs. Heather Knight also 57. Um, Ash Gardner, though, took four for 99. and only got better from there for Australia. So at that point, uh, the game just looked headed for another draw, to be honest. So this is the first five-day test match uh, that the women have played. The last, uh, in fact, every test, I think, before, and it's always been a four-day test match. And they've, right. they've had six draws in a row across mm. every nation that's played a test. So they decided to give it a fifth day. And thank God they did. Because it turned out to be an absolute cracker. So Australia had a 10-run lead under the first innings. And then uh, Australia made 257. A bit of a collapse there after Beth Mooney made 85, opening the batting. Elisa Healy made 50, despite having a fractured finger that we learnt about uh, before the game. Um, and so it was then down to England to chase 267 for the win. And they started off okay. They were uh, 9 for 55. Uh, but then the pitch started to take some turn. Uh, also, Sophie Gosselin took 5 for 63, so she ten actually she took 10. 10 for the match. Yeah, incredible Good suffering. celebration as well for, very, t- for 10. Very good. Very good. Uh, and England were all out for 178, thanks to Ash Gardner's 8 for 66, so she finishes with 12 for, for the match. Yeah. Um, so this is the thing, uh, Eccleston 10, very, very good. W- w- yeah. Sorry, what would we end up? Oh, Gardner 12. Okay, yeah. good. And I was just thinking about, like, you know, with Ash Gardner, like, she obviously went for enormous money in the WPL, uh, which is obviously the most important thing for any cricketer. Of course. How much they go for. Um, I was just thinking about Ash Gardner is like, I, I think it's, uh, it would be, it's, it's ridiculous to actually call her a luxury player, but she's, um, she's not, she's not the best batter in the team. She's not the best bowler in the team, but she's like an excellent contributor every single time she plays. She, and she sort of like bats between like, between, I don't know, six and nine and just like rolls out a few offies and she's like. She scores hundreds. She scores big runs in the in the T20s, in ODI. She bowls crucial overs. She's a good fielder. And she's like just this player that sort of like just floats around the number eight and rolls out a few overs and then just like scores 40 in the in the third innings here and takes fucking 12-er. <laughs> like, like, it just sort of shows like how fucking good Australia are. They've got this player well, who would be the captain and yeah. the most capped player of all time in any code of any sport yeah. for any other country. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean Gardner could... Gardner could bat three. I'm sure she could she could bowl seam up too. Well, you know, I mean, yeah, she, yeah, she, yeah. she's a, she's a br- arm, she's right a arm. she's a brilliant cricketer. Um, best ever return for a player in a Test match for Australia, twelve for. Um, this was an Good this idea. was this was an excellent Test match, and uh, I think a lot of people are saying this. I'm happy to um, to join the throng. You know, this this is vindication for five day Tests. That that fourth day was spectacular. Uh, the way that it uh, ebbed and flowed, uh, yeah, it moved quite quickly. Yeah, it, it, day, it yeah. did. And uh, you know, we we saw twists and turns within it. I mean, uh, Mooney and uh, Healy making important runs, then England coming back, getting themselves back into the match, then Australia fight back again uh, before they get a couple of wickets. Australia to just heading into the fifth day, mm. uh, we started to see you know how beautiful Test cricket can be when you give it time to do it. Uh, as you said earlier, like there was a, Australia had a run of six draws going back to 2015, so I think mm-hmm. that's a hell of a song. Uh, and obviously whoever sings that song will play 100 tests in yep. a row. Uh, they'll be living their whole life trying to do that given how much women's um, t- <laughs> test cricket is being played, maybe four lives. Uh, but um, yeah, look, it will still... Uh, look, so, so in and of itself, a fantastic win for Australia. This The setup to this game was Australia was... Uh, Australia had a few... Um, players missing from their usual side. I mean, Rachel Haynes retired. Uh, Meg Lanning is unavailable. Mm-hmm. Uh, in England threatened in that first day or two yep. to suggest that some gaps were closing mm-hmm. uh, b- between them, and um, and may- maybe they were. You know, it, it, it is hard to win a Test match, but uh, eventually Australia's class shone out. They just had players of depth, you know, lower in the order who were able to get things happening. Um, and Ash Gardner, who, as you say, I think we know her through white ball cricket as uh, you know someone who's just so versatile for all f- all way all disciplines. Mm. You know, she showed her wares now as a bona fide front line spinner. Mm. Uh, that that's that just goes to show what a great cricketer she is. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And uh, as I said, great, great song for Australia. Great advert for five-day test matches for women. My personal view is that, um, you know, I, I, I don't accept the uh, the argument that test cricket isn't commercially viable for women. I mean, we've seen so much with women's cricket that if you build it, they will come. You must invest. I, I think that test cricket is fundamental to the experience of all formats of cricket as well. If there are commercial difficulties, uh let's keep working to solve them because this was a special game it just goes to show if you try uh, and you keep giving it opportunities you can be rewarded and there's no way i'd be saying that if england had won the game um pr- probably wouldn't even be referring to this game um probably, probably, I, I, probably wouldn't spoken about all, it. all i would have st- started preparing a submission to cricket australia just in terms of um failure on the australian women's team uh, as part but yeah we're you know australia's on track for now for um a clean sweep every point gained uh, and, yeah. and and an open top bus parade. So the, there are how many points on? There's 16 points on offer. There's seven games, but this test match is worth four points. Yeah. Now Australia haven't lost a game in, in in regular time, if you will, since 2021. They lost one game in India uh, in a super over. Um, but uh, so you know, for, for England to turn this around would be absolutely phenomenal. But uh, you know, anything can happen. But uh, it won't. Um, Pez, <laughs> can I give you my personal experience of um, watching the test match, the women's mm. test match? Now, like I'm not. I'm not an expert in, in women's cricket by any means. There are a lot of people who do really good work who cover the, the, the sport far better than my interest in it. And, like, to be honest, if the Australian team weren't one of the most dominant sports teams that I've ever witnessed in my lifetime mm. and just happened to be... We happen to be from the same country, so I like them. I'm not sure how much I'd watch, but, you know, but I do understand I've, I've watched enough. I'll probably watch more than, 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 you know, the average person for sure because of the nature of my job. But... Um, when it got to at the end of day three, and I think England was still, England was still batting, and I was just thinking at this point, well, this is going to be another draw. I think I, I think I probably let like my own. I'm, I'm not sure if it was like toxic masculinity per se, though. You know, like there, there, there just is that in you know in, in conversations anyway. When you talk about it with with other guys, it's like, well, this is shit, isn't it? And like I I, I know that I I know that's not true because I've watched enough women's mm. sport, women's mm. cricket especially, mm. and it's fucking it's actually really good. Mm. Um. And it's a lot. It's a lot better than what I think. What people want to make it, mm. make, or they they want to make oh. it out to be. Mm. But when I was watching at the end of day three, and I was like, well, I wondered about Test cricket. And in that moment, I wondered about this place of tests for women's cricket because, like, at, as we see with men's cricket, it's like it's it it is evidently dying off. And I wondered, like, if if the women's game can go through enough pain of like putting up with like and more and more draws where they could get to a point of maybe utopia where like it becomes viable and everyone's involved and everyone's invested in it. Now like, and then and then I also wondered, now this was toxic in my head. I was like, well, because they, they don't play any first class cricket of like long form stuff. Yeah. And like through the grassroots and I play yeah. like two day contest. Yeah. Do they have the skills to take 20 wickets? Yeah. Because evidently like there's been so many draws and that was like, that was just in my head. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, the pitch starts to take a bit of wear and tear mm-hmm. as it would for every single mm-hmm. men's game. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, Oh no! Days four and five were fucking great. Obviously, my mm. team won, so I mm. like that. Mm. But it was um, that was just my experience of watching the test yeah. match, you know. Yeah. And like, uh, and it turns out um, that my um, my bias or whatever was was still there in my head, and it was wrong and dumb. Yeah. Um, because it was actually a fucking great game. But if that was a men's test match, and one team won by ninety runs or whatever it was, yeah. eighty nine runs, we'd be like fucking brilliant test match. People yeah. score runs, people took wickets, great result. Yeah. No, well, uh, well, well said. I think that's cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, peop- and th- there's all sorts of arguments um, to stop doing it, like, like and, and probably valid ones. I mean, uh, w- women don't play any long form cricket from a grade level as well, that's what so I mean. it's yeah, like yeah. Uh, you know, all, all the way through, it ends up like Test cricket ends up becoming this huge anomaly, um, this huge novelty, rare thing that you do. But mm. I do think that like we're, we're talking about the elite level and some very good players who are getting better as well. And I, I just think Test cricket is part of the ecosystem of elite cricket. You know. I think think when you uh, I think it all it all grabs context off each other and ultimately I I defer as you sh- always should when talking about issues of um, inclusion uh, if you're mm. part of the majority or the people who have always had the advantage you are, are going to naturally be blinded to the experience of those who don't right you know so I believe generally speaking it's important to defer to the, um, the to the f- views uh, and experiences of those who yeah. have been um, denied things and as far as I can tell um, women at the top of the game want to play test cricket you know yeah. that is part of their experience yeah. uh, that's part of and, and they're bloody good at the game and I think if like if that's what women are calling for then 
everything should be done to make it happen. Now, what are the details of this? I don't know. You know, we, we I mean, test cricket in society, men and women, is is dying and becoming less commercially viable. Right. I just think whatever it looks like, uh, I, I think five days has to be locked in. Um, how you know w- w- how often it happens is is the question. But I do think that a game like yesterday, or so the game that finished yesterday or the day before, um, finishing up is um, uh, is evidence that it should be looking and feeling as test cricket is meant to look and feel mm. when you get it done. That, mm. That's all I'm saying. And mm. um, I'm only saying it because we won. No. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, of course, yeah. yeah. And, and can Australia do the, the, the entire clean sweep? Otherwise, I think sh- if they don't do that, they should hand the ashes back that's right. uh, to England. Uh, just a quick note on the World uh, Cup qualifiers and also the World Cup dates have been announced for the, the tournament proper in India there. Uh, so I've got it in front of me here. So, okay, so the World Cup dates have been announced exactly 100 days before the tournament starts, which has been an absolute stitch up for people who, who don't live in India who want to go or organising tours and such like Barmy Army and, you know, the Australian cricket um, touring guys. Um, so Australia start their campaign against India, the hosts, at Chennai. Where's that at? Chennai. That's oh, okay. at Chennai. Yeah. Uh, That's a great result for Adam Zampa. Walked right into that trap there. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Sam's Agar. That's right. Uh, Finchie will be back in, I guess. Um, (laughs) Defending defending champions, um, England will be starting their campaign in Ahmedabad against New Zealand. Um, Australia are playing nine games in eight cities. Um, I know a lot of people... um, who uh, who are going to the tournaments uh, in a working capacity have been like uh, worried about how much the teams are moving around. Also, the tournament goes for like six weeks. It feels fucking. That's off a thigh pad. That's not yeah, out. It sounded thigh pad, mm. didn't it? Sounded thigh pad. Um, and that's the sort of thing you pick up if you've ever actually played the sport. Um, so there's just so much travel and the and the for, for the teams and uh, I guess all the staff and the touring parties. Um, and the tournament goes for uh, like a month and a half. It's unbelievable. Uh, anyway, the World Cup qualifiers have been going on. Now, the West Indies are the main story of that so far, and it's actually a really sad state of, sad state of affairs for that um, sort of confected nations. Uh, it's a collection of nations, I suppose, um, because uh, they are in massive trouble of not even qualifying for the World Cup. They are into the Super Sixes phase. Now, this is going to get a little bit confusing about how, this, how the qualifiers work, but basically... There are eight teams in two different groups. So two groups of four. That's not right. There's five. There's 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 ten teams qualifying. Uh, okay, trying I'm to qualify I've for I've two I've got spots. zeros and ones falling in front of my head already. Exactly. Yeah. So two teams will qualify from the qualifiers. They are two groups of five each. And then th- the top three go into the super sixes. Basically, all you need to know, as I abbreviate this, is that the West Indies lost to Zimbabwe, and then last night they lost to the Netherlands. The, the Netherlands um, chased down 374. They needed one to win off the last ball, and uh, I forget who was batting, uh, but he got out to a catch from Jason Holder off Alzari Joseph, and they, so went to a super over. And then Logan Van Beek hit 30 runs off the super over against Jason Holder. Uh, it was always going to be hard to chase. Which was always going to be hard to chase in the Super. I think they, West Indies actually lost two wickets as well. Mm. So they, they didn't even finish yeah. the full over. But, Eight uh, for two. So what it, what it means is, because the teams carry over their points for that first stage into the Super Sixes. Now, what it will mean is, is that basically if the West Indies lose to Sri Lanka, they cannot make the World Cup. So it's basically going to come down to one game, um, which is just a really, really sad state of affairs that there's guys clearly who don't want to play for the West Indies and they've got some stunning cricketers. Um, so that's, um, I mean, really, it's dreadful. But, um, yeah. you know, looking forward to the Aussies knocking over uh, whoever qualifies. Uh, in yeah. the, you know, I'm looking forward to this summer as well, actually. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Um, that's going to be... Uh, it really it is a sad state of affairs. Yeah, you know, we're, we're uh, West Indies, um, uh, you know, I guess, flailing and diminishing as a thing. Mm. Uh, it, you know, I don't, I don't want to be... Um, glib about it you know it actually it just it, it just is quite sad and uh i don't mm. as with many things in cricket i <laughs> i wish i could solve it on a podcast <laughs> uh, <laughs> i've got a few uh, ideas yeah <laughs> yeah all right hashtag ask tgc uh Pezzo, i believe yes. you've got something in front of me i of am you. ready to go this is from anon and anon says hashtag ask tgc uh and the title is A Sexual Approach to the Pop Increase. Good. Please keep anonymous, as is my want. <clears throat> Boys, 
I write to you from the social safety of my girlfriend's granny flat in Melbourne as I quietly watch the Aussie Test team toil away on day four at Edgebaston. My girlfriend has zero interest in cricket and hasn't the slightest clue regarding its physical mechanics or psychological nuances, i.e. repressed emotions, identity crises, eye poking, etc, etc. However, she was more than happy to let me watch the cricket while she carried on with her evening routine. As I watched on with the hope of finding psychological safety in the form of Australian test dominance to complement the social safety my loving girlfriend had already helped create for me, solar panel Pat delivered a pristine reverse swinging Yorker to knock over Ollie Pope. Oh, yeah. Caught up in the ecstasy of the aforementioned delivery, I gestured to my girlfriend to watch the play and simply explained, that is sex. While this was met with a face of confusion and mild contempt, the evening continued. A few minutes later, Cameron Green was brought into the attack. Presuming my girlfriend had already forgotten about the delivery from Solar Panel Pat, I was blissfully unprepared for the state of even deeper confusion and bewilderment I was about to face. As Cameron Green galloped towards the crease, my girlfriend quietly walked up behind me and began a series of sexual moans in my ear, increasing in both volume and gusto with each iteration. Stopping after the delivery had been bold and laughing for a few moments, my girlfriend carried on with her evening while I attempted to process what had just happened. My questions are as follows. Why is my reaction towards professional cricket prowess now being intertwined with sex? Jesus. Is my girlfriend turned on by Cam Green as much as I am? Why can't I enjoy things like a normal person? <laughs> Despite only hearing for a few brief seconds of RCGC Fridays, why does my girlfriend only refer to the pod as the penis podcast? <laughs> Cheers, Anon. What a, what a fascinating uh, relationship you and your partner have, Anon. Um, I like the idea that she's, she's very socially I think she's extremely down to earth I think you need to lock her down and, and lock her up which was which was a cry that Trump well that, that everyone's got their own proclivities but uh, <laughs> of course. but uh, of course. yeah I mean yeah Cummins arrows that sexual delivery into Ollie Pope's stumps yeah. uh, and the, the the way it arrowed was whack esque I think said last week uh, right. and and anon correctly um, explains that as sex. I mean, that is that, that was the chief metaphor for it. Not something is like something, something is something. That's a metaphor. That is sex, what Cummins did. And all, no his, question about all that. his um partner did was simply um, follow that up. I mean, she wouldn't have had a Scooby-Doo or, or care in the world no, about who like was bowling. That. I like how the, 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 the Anon is going like, oh, well, Cameron Green was bowling, so this is different. I mean, to... to to his partner, I presume it's like, well, now the bowl is coming in to do another bowl, bowl, and that's how it would have been yeah, said. Yeah, yeah. And just comes and, and moans into his ear. Uh, she's hot. She, she's winding him up, and yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm so, I'm, yeah, it is kind of hot, to be honest. I'm fucking into it. Yeah. Uh, you sent photos, Anon? And sounds. <laughs> <laughs> I um. So I think I think it's yeah, lock her down, lock her up. Yeah. Uh, I think that I think though, mate, I think that um. Like when I'm what like I as a batter like I really appreciate you know a good on driver a cover driver yes, a, yes, you know, yeah. a, a vociferous and aggressive pull stroke <laughs> you know yeah uh, like the, the 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 crack of the willow cascades mm. around a, a relatively mm. empty stadium yeah, you yeah, know, yeah that that's sort right. of stuff that like the I, sound I can, bounces off the I, I can I can uh, the walls, I can yeah. get myself going with that but I'm not gonna yeah. like necessarily get off on it you know but yeah like, you're not saying that's sex nah but then like but when a, when a bowler does things that I you know could only ever dream about ex in fact I'm, I'd never actually really fantasised about being a bowler actually so, so I said mm. take that back but like when I mm. saw like you know Cummins ball to root in the 2019 Ashes yeah. at uh, Old Trafford that ball to um, Polly Pope the in swinger with the reverse tang and uh, you know even like you know ball of the century sort of stuff like even that, with that, that, that ball that's not even that gets me off hard. Well, especially with Cummins there because that's not even that's not a ball he bowls he's like I'm just going to give him this York. Like, he, yeah. I, I reckon he's tried that Yorker in test cricket two or three times yeah. and like and it doesn't yeah. create the uh, it doesn't create the angles that Cummins normally creates no, Cummins is normally bowling a hard length yeah, he's, yeah, he's yeah, nibbling length. he's hardly like giving yeah, he doesn't he is it's hard length it's a violent hostile action mm. into the top of your bat it's hitting the splice it's stop hitting it. outside stop it, yeah stop it that hurts my hands it vibrates <laughs> into my hands my hand i need my two pairs of, i only have one pair of inners on guys can i yeah. have gloves please yeah it's hitting the hard outside half of your bat inside half of the bat <laughs> but then he he actually gives it air the cummins air and it arrows a different yeah. way like it, the, the the ball moved like uh those um you know like hyper unrealistic uh, YouTube arrows when someone shows right, you how yeah, much yeah, a yeah. ball swung, like, or, or how much a free kick swerved. And an amazing facial reaction to go with it. E exactly. Well, that and that was all of us. And yeah. those facial reactions 
uh, you know, that, that we, we, you know, in the past have been called big six reactions. Big but six they're reactions. Big, big sex reactions. Yes, yes, yes. So everything in this question is aligned as far as I'm concerned. I think it's a good response from Anon. Mm. I think mm. it's a good response from his partner. I think it's um, lock her down, lock her up stuff. Yep. Lock I think her down, lock her up. I think everyone is, is doing well. Oh, and she calls it the penis podcast because that's sixty percent of the content. No, I mean that's fair enough. On Patreon, sign up patreon. dot com forward slash grade cricketer. You can pay money every month to hear us discuss the mythology of penis <laughs> and its cultural relationship to the game, Australians and masculinity. That's all the time we've got uh, for this year episode. Uh, thank you so much uh, for for joining us. As always, we'll be back at the end of this here test match uh, as we approach Lords. Uh, thanks as always to Budgie Smuggler, to our dear patrons, and for everyone who's come to our live shows. Thanks for having us at the Oval too. in the UK, and everyone who's had it, everyone here has had us at the Oval. Uh, see you guys on the internet real soon. Cheers.